Okay, let's walk through a quick DFS installation. Now, DFS stands for Distributed File System. It's not a role. It is a role service. So let me show you how we're going to install it, and we'll talk a little bit about what it is. I'm going to go to Manage, Add Roles and Features, and skip the normal screen. It's a role or feature-based installation. It's on the pick the server that we want. So it's you. if you look for DFS, you're not going to find it here, or under Features for that matter. You're going to find it by expanding File and Storage Services. And then you'll see we have our file our storage services is already installed, and one of our file and iSCSI services is installed. If we expand that, we'll see it's the file server. Now, we also have all of these other things server uh, that will fall under that. So DFS is right here, and there's two pieces for it: the DFS namespaces. And go ahead and click Add Features, and then we'll take a look at what it says over here. DFS namespaces enables you to group shared folders together. Basically, what it does is it simplifies file sharing. So you may be in a situation where you have files stored on multiple servers and across multiple sites. And that's great, but the challenge that creates is trying to remember where files are located at or jumping from one server to another server to get the files that you need when you're a client working in that network. DFS simplifies that by creating one shared structure. And that structure doesn't all have to be on the same server. You can have files on different servers and different sites and different locations uh, on different networks, and you can bring them all into one namespace or one structure to make it easier for people to navigate. And then when they go to the particular folder, it will redirect them to the target of that folder or to the location where those actual files are stored. So that's DFS. DFS replication gives us, gives us the ability to synchronize files across different targets. So what this does is it lets us set say some files on server and site A and the same files on server on site B and we'll replicate between those two so users in site A can get them from their local server, users from site B can get them from their local server, but they'll replicate back and forth so that everybody has the right uh, version of the files. And that all falls under the same namespace. So you need to install DFS namespaces. You can install DFS replication if you uh, want to do that type of redundancy. Now, it's not a, a replacement for backup or RAID or something like that, but it is a great feature that gives you some additional redundancy and some additional file protection. I'm going to go ahead and install both of them, and so I'm going to click Next. Now, let me back up before I do. I want to point out one other thing here for you. Right here, FSRM, the File Server Resource Manager, this isn't something that we're going to go through, but I want you to be aware of it. FSRM is a great tool in that it allows you to classify files and folders, configure file and folder quotas, define file screening policies. It is a great reporting tool and configuration tool for your file serving. So if you are doing a lot of uh, big file serving, FSRM might be a really good tool for you to use. That file screen, by the way, will allow you to put screens and filters on your shares to prevent certain files, like maybe music files or video files, from being uploaded if you don't want those being stored on your server. So another great tool. Okay, forging ahead with our DFS installation. We're going to click Next, uh, no additional features, and notice there's really nothing here that it asks us to add on to it. So it's a really straightforward installation. All it does is it extends file server, in fact, all of the tools that we saw there under uh, File and Storage Services, all they do is they extend the capability of your file server. They give you more tools, more resources, more configurations that you can use with your file serving. Now, DFS is frequently used when you have multi-servers in different locations, maybe even in the same location, but multiple servers, and if your file sharing structure gets a little bit complicated, we'll use DFS to simplify it. That's where we would actually use it. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. We'll let our installation finish, and in our next video, we'll talk about configuring DFS.